Yeah. And, uh, I'm gonna have him. I'm gonna have him. Uh, like come in at the end, like when we close it up. I have him come in, like yo, what's good? You know, these are the girls, cause it's it's gonna be it's gonna ha- gonna have audio, right? Obviously. Oh, yeah. No. Video That's too. Dope. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna. All right, we're going to get started right now. Welcome back to PolPolitikin.com, your home for self-help meets hip-hop. Right now, we're live on YouTube. Check me out on Apple, Amazon, wherever you listen to podcasts. One, two, one, two, I'm in place to be with West Now. How you doing, bro? Good, brother. How you doing, man? I'm good, man. You was referred to me by the great William Cooper. That's the homie right there, man. Very talented artist, uh, very amazing uh, promotional character. And I was reading you from Newark. Yes, sir. All right. How's it in Newark? What's going on over there? Oh, yeah, you got it on the stomach. Yeah, yep. South Street, baby. So how is it growing up over there? Born and raised? Born and raised uh, Union, Irvington, Newark, all around that area, around the tri-state area. Uh, my grandparents uh, lived in Irvington, uh, spent many summers as a youngster rapping on the front porch in the hood <clears throat> at my grandparents' house. And uh, yeah, Union, Irvington, North, all that. All right. So just let us know about your background, because I saw, um, I was looking at your stuff. I saw your older videos. You was in a, a group called Razor Blade Hand Grenade. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, so like you was in a, that was like a rock group. So just uh, it's, like, yeah, like, it's like hardcore punk rock, hip hop. It was in few. We actually um, we uh, we coined the term Brick City Hardcore. There's like New York Hardcore, New Jersey Hardcore, and we coined the term Brick City Hardcore, which is like, you know, like hardcore punk rock from North. What's up? Yeah, so just let us know how you got involved with music. Um, At a very young age, um, I had elders like my uncle, my cousins, uh, that were into a lot of the punk rock stuff and the hardcore rock and roll shit. All of us growing up as kids, you know, you listen to what your grandparents listen to, old school soul jazz all that but um i got into hip-hop as a child i don't know how uh spending the summers in irvington at my grandparents house and uh and also you know the 90s being a, a huge uh early early 90s late 90s being a huge part of uh the, some of the most iconic hip-hop that was ever put out so as a child i got into cassette tapes and my first cassette tape was uh genius jizz of liquid swords one of my first cassette tapes Naughty by Nature, shit like that. But of the source, I would I would listen to the Liquid Swords album, and as a child, uh, I would read the lyrics because they had them in the in the cassette tape liner notes, and I would memorize the lyrics because I was just that into it, you know. And uh, you know, my pops when I was growing up too, he uh, I always tell the story. He bought my mom a Two Live Crew cassette tape that was she thought it was Boys to Men, and I put it in. And it was like some raunchy, like shit that a nine, 10 year old kid should, should, should listen to. Oh, no. Dad, this is bad music. And he was like, all right, well, I'm gonna put it on top of the refrigerator. If you wanna listen to it, you can listen to it. And, uh, you know, just through through uh, media and, and the the iconic time of, you know, the 90s, where a lot of real, real hip hop and lyricism came out. And it's more about beats and bars than how it is nowadays. It's, it's different, you know? So what age was you when you actually started like actually writing and performing? I I was uh performing, I was more on the on the front step step, just rapping and writing. And I would say honestly, between the late ages of 12 and 13, I really started writing and formulating my own bars. Like when I was at high school, um, I was a young punk rock dude. I was always into hip hop and punk rock, and I was crazy. I was like a crazy little white boy in the hood with a mohawk. And I, you know, all the dudes from my school were older, like, you know, uh, seniors when I was a freshman, they would bring me this little punk rock dude to the hood and I'd be rapping and they'd be like, yo, this young man can rap. Like, and I would go. And that's when I started, we didn't really record, uh, uh, formulate songs. I don't think at the time, but it was, you know, at that time that I started writing more and recording and uh, being more invested in uh, trying to formulate bars and sentences and words and songs and whatnot. Yeah, I would say I, I kind of, um, I kind of got like while well, I was checking out some of the videos, I kind of got like a little uh, House of Pain um, vibe a little bit. Did they influence okay. you any? Yeah, I, of course, House of Pain. 
uh, Naughty by Nature, Onyx, uh, Wu Tang, uh, like I said, Genius Jizzle with Swords, um, Boys, uh, a lot, a lot of the. I used to find random cassette tapes and, and CDs, and you know, back then you put them in your cassette player and you just listen them from front to back. You know, there was no really rewinding or, or fast forward, and you would rewind it to flip the tape or something, or fast forward it so you could listen to the other side. But it was, you know, whatever I picked up as a child. Yeah, we was we was talking about this a little earlier. So, um, can you describe your name and let us know the meaning behind it? Um, West Nile is like. West nihilistic and I always thought I was never a battle rapper, but uh being from that generation, um uh, West Nile is like the utter nothingness. Like you can't destroy nothing. Like I'm just here, so you can't destroy me. It's West Nihilistic, like the term nihilistic, like the utterness, nothingness of death or whatever. Like you can't defeat and destroy or kill me. I'm just I, I am I'm I'm a void, you know? And I just always thought that way. it was came from a punk rock band, the Nihilistics from uh, from uh, Long Island, New York, actually, too. That's what I was. I, I, I trans, you know, transformed it into West Nihilistic, West Nile. Mm -hmm. Now, how would you describe yourself to people? Uh, how would I describe myself? Uh, I'm yeah. a very, very much a people person. I'm a performer. I'm an artist. You know, I've done some acting. I've done a lot of things in the years. And uh I, de I describe myself as a positive person that's been through a lot of things in life and uh, made me more positive. More, yeah, more, more. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Were you, no, what you were saying? No, I, I, I was just saying, you know, like, uh, you know, being through certain things in life uh, can sculpt you from a young age uh, to an adult. And uh, I just think that, you know, whether whatever person goes through in life, it scopes them as they become an adult, as far as music goes and uh, terminologies and uh, uh, different situations, life situations. So I feel like I'm a very positive person because I lost a lot and I've gained a lot and I'm, I'm, I'm very blessed to be alive. And I wake up every day and I'm like, that's enough for me, you know? Yeah, you were saying acting, I was reading, you had something you was involved with Ben Stiller. Oh yeah, I was in the uh, the Ben Stiller show Severance that was on. Um, it was on Apple TV with Adam Scott. I had I was supposed to be an extra, and um, I was just uh they 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 casted me as a bartender, so I got a little like, you know, me serving Adam Scott a drink, which was pretty cool. It was dope. It was like you know some real. It was a a, a pretty big spotlight. I mean, you had got a, a Snoop co-sign. A little while yeah. ago. Yeah, Snoop co-signed me uh uh two years ago, two and a half years ago. And I, and the homie says, like, yo, you can't talk about the Snoop co-sign no more because it was two years ago, you know, fucking yeah. with me. Whatever. You know, because it's not relevant. But people ask me, yeah, uh, I was in front of Walmart during COVID doing live hip hop shows and I had a pimp coat on and some gators. And I was just spitting some bars uh, with my group Crimson Twins, me and A Sharp, shout out to A Sharp. And uh, he found it, it was the right place, right time. He saw the um, he saw the Christmas trees in the background and he, I had the Snoop Dogg bump box and, you know, Snoop controls his page. So shout outs to Snoop for, for posting us because I think it was an organic thing. Like he wasn't trying to play me. I think he was feeling what was going on. It was, it was real street hip hop shit in front of Walmart, just doing a live show. Mm. Man, what you working on right now? Uh, right now we released um, uh, Wicked Life of Crime. I got it right here. Let me grab the cop. My bad. Wicked Life of Crime. Uh, all produced by Stu Bangers. Uh, five mm -hmm. joints. We got a uh, Pace one on here, uh, the song Fresh Like Dougie, uh, featuring Gore-Tex from Nonfiction uh, at a joint, and uh, my homie Berserk, shout out to Berserk and Chubbs uh, from Boston and uh, New York. Uh, it's a dope, it's a dope five song EP uh, produced by a Grammy Award winning uh, artist, Don Cheeger. Um, uh, he's fucked with uh, Beanie Siegel, Ludacris, 50, Chris Brown, people in that name. And uh, it's a dope project, man. 
We just dropped a new video and uh, we're doing pretty good numbers right now. All right, hey, speaking of the video, y'all, I was about to go into it right now. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's dope. You can pull it up like that. That's ill. Yeah, I would say you want to talk about it a little bit. Yeah, a lot of eye candy on there. Yeah, man. The girls were just here. They're gonna they're gonna pop in at the end of the video. They went on the walk. I told them two of the two of my my girl and my home girl. Uh, they was that are in the video. They were just chilling in the backyard in the pool right now. So they're gonna pop in later on and say what's up. But it's all all homies, you know. All, all homies and sisters, you know, that were part of this project, and uh, it's uh, it's just some raw, you know, dope hip hop shit. Everybody going through it right now. All right. I make sick moves. From New York to New Jersey, merch in the back seat, do two for 30, catch Rick on the set, demolition derby, word was you talking shit, I heard it from a birdie, your chicken fat, that bitch who did you dirty, so fuck the raps, I'm just here for the journey, who's crying now, collect the cash and quit it early, you can walk away or leave, wounded on a gurney, we at war now, execution, no mercy, stop puffing up, we can see you're not sturdy, leave the chest wet, blood red, devil's jersey, nihilistic means I'm dead already, you can't hurt me, dead set on that number though, I'm kinda nerdy, calling church with the click, yeah, no clergy, I do more than just spit shit, I'm mad quirky, bitch, brand new out the box, yeah, she mad perky, ain't tryna take it there, and if you are, I ain't play it fair, leave you in the cold pavement, but if they can stand, take it there, I'ma let you know, I ain't play that joint i like your um you got i like your flow man you got i don't really you don't sound like nobody else to me you got a unique flow i appreciate that man i appreciate that yeah i bro i, I rap from the heart man i tell people uh you know i do this shit because i love it man you know what i'm saying i don't give a fuck about money i don't give a fuck about street cred i don't give a fuck about fame i don't give a fuck about none of that i feel in my heart of hearts and i tell everybody this if you could do what you do in life and give it away to the world and put your heart into it and love what you do, then you're no longer ever working again in your life. You know, they say like, if you do what you love, you never work a day again in your life. Something like to that context, it's like, if you could put something out there and not expect anything in return and then get all this love, man, we'd be getting so much love that it's like, it's crazy. It, it means a lot. I mean, we, we, uh, you know, I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't pat myself on the back or nothing like that and, and say I'm iconic or I'm, um, uh, up, you know, underground. I, I don't. I never speak any spells into the world like that. I just do what I love to do, and people fuck with us, man. Look at the comments. Look at the likes. The shit is all ninety nine point nine. I don't think any one hundred percent positive on the comments. So it's like nowadays to be doing uh, a style of music that's more 
I'm not, and I don't consider myself an old school rapper either. I, you know, someone referred to me as old school because I'm old, I'm 37. You know what I'm saying? I don't look 37, but I'm 37. So I come from a different time, you know? And uh, I just, that's it, man. I'm not trying to ramble. I just, I, I do what I love, man. I want to put that shit out to the world and put out quality music, man. Quality hip hop, real hip hop for the people. Because that, everything I speak is real, man. I don't talk no, uh, you know, a weird tongue on some, falsified shit or rap about shit like like i said home girls are gonna pop right back in the girls on the video are here right now <laughs> and we, we we doing this this is all family you know what i'm saying this is like we hustle together we make money together we sell merch we sell music you know what i'm saying like i'm a working class motherfucker bro you know what i'm saying i speak for the people y'all say what do you love about music the most i like i like how it uh it, it helps people and, and makes people smile to be honest with you man like uh um you know i've done a lot of music a lot of like uh hardship type shit and people tell me like man like your, your, your music helped me out in life you know what i'm saying like i was going through a time and I, I i was able to connect with your music and it's a reality to them you know and that if that's to me you know to, to perform in front of people and make people smile that's all I care about, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just want to do that, and that's it. Like that, you know. This is that simple. Like, there's, there's no, there's no like real uh, equation to it. It's just like put out dope shit, make people smile, and I'm happy. You know. Yeah. What is hip hop to you, man? Hip hop is life, man. Hip hop is uh, is my life growing up. You know, and and you know. People could argue uh, uh, between race, culture, and, and and separation, but you know people don't want to be unified. You know, I, I you know I grew up, uh, you know I'm a part of a, a, a an anti-racist movement. I'll just say that I can't say no names, but I'm a part of something that's against all this, this separation, man. Like we got to come together as a culture. Hip hop is culture, community. A revolution to me, man, and 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 life. It's my life, you know. Uh, you know, I'm 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 really from this. I don't I don't I don't speak on things that I don't know or talk on places I've never been. You know, I live on South Street in Newark. There's a, a documentary called Life of Crime. That's why I call the album Wicked Life of Crime. That blocks my block, my warehouse that I lived in, that I showered on a loading dock. That's in the video, you know. That's you know real talk, you know. And people know people know it's not a secret. People know me from. People know where I'm from. Know what I'm about, and and I, you know, I'm a very positive person, man. I don't, I don't, I don't try to flex. I don't try to do shit. That's why I go there, and I'm good. I go to Irvington, shoot a video. I'm good. Pace wasn't with me when I shot the beginning of the video. I, I just ran caught up my grandparents' house. They were looking at it. it's kind of funny when Pace actually pulled up because it was almost like two of us were flexing, you know. But like. They respected me, you know, homeboy was in the bodega, came out, you see in the video, he's like, yo, cameraman, give me count this money real quick. You know, he was trying to rap over me in the video and I, and, uh, and I, and I was just, I, I stayed rapping on, on the milk crate in front of the store in the bodega in the hood off of Melrose and everything. But yeah, man, hip hop is life, man. I'm sorry, I don't mean to go off on a tangent, my bad. Hip hop is life, hip hop is reality, man. It's the world we're living in. Yeah, I would say, um. How old were you when you got your first tattoo? 14. So you rocking the Bam Bam Bigelow now. Yeah, yeah, man. I'm blasted, bro. Fully blasted. You reap what you sow. <laughs> I what got made I, you uh what made you keep getting to me tattoo? What, what, what was your first tattoo? Then what made you get more? My first tattoo was this uh infrared skull. This is a, a punk rock band without that other shit around it. And um it, it's a uh, it's like a punk rock band from, from UK eighty two like that era in England and shit. And uh, what made me get more? I don't know, man. I just thought it was badass as a kid. You know, like I was fourteen when I got tattooed. Fourteen year old kids were getting tattooed in uh, nineteen ninety nine, and whenever the time it was, I was getting tattooed. Early two thousands. You know, there was no younger kid. It was it didn't pop off. Tattoos weren't like that. You know, like yeah. and. Uh, that just not got in my head now. So how was you? How did you get a tattoo at fourteen? I just thought about that now when you said that. <laughs> I just thought about that. Like, oh yeah, you said fourteen. I, I, I was I was I was staying at my boy's house right uh, in uh, Cranford, and we took uh, the train to Manhattan. I got the ID upstairs, 
and the tattoo downstairs is like pre 9 11, I think. So, like, uh, they had like the, um, you know, it was a Vermont operator's license with the hologram shit. Like, they weren't scanning shit back then. It said William Carps. And I went and got the tattoo downstairs. The ID was, I don't know, whatever, 60, 50 bucks, whatever it is. And then, you know, I got blasted up downstairs. And it was kind of like some underground shit. And I remember going home, my mom's like, yo, what's that on your arm? I'm like, oh, it's a fake tattoo. And then, like, she tried to, like, rub it off. She's like, are you crazy? You're 14 years old. You out of your mind? Like, you know, and I'm like, boss, it's all right. And then she took me for a tattoo the next year. Like, I was 15. She took me, you know what I mean? Like, it wasn't, I think my parents adapted to it quick. Like, they knew, like, what path I was on or some shit, you know? I was a trouble kid. You know, how would you describe your creative process when you're making music? Oh, man. It's one of two things. Either I got to be by myself and uh, be either really happy or really mad. Or when I put in front of people, certain people, you know, I produce a certain amount of material, you know, like Pace asked me to do a certain style. He's like, I need you to do this shit like this. He's like, I don't want to make it sound like that, but I need you to do it like this. And I'll execute it, like getting put on the spot. Like, you know what I'm saying? The spotlight, like, all right, now it's time to, now it's time to produce something of a high caliber of of lyrical content not just some average shit yeah i see you do a lot of like you had a couple of songs with pace one yeah um I, I i knew i knew z and a lot of some of the outsiders from back in the day i actually never met pace back in the day i was probably I want to say 20, 22, 23, around that area. And, uh, you know, used to kick it with them. My homie put me, my homie Toast, shout out to my homie Toast. He was the one that was like, yo, you should do a song with Pace. And I'm like, all right, like, well, what's up? And he's like, I, I want to talk to him because he's he's really tight with him from back in the day. And, uh, you know, obviously I never met Pace when I, I knew Z and a lot of the other homies. And, um, Long story short, he set it up and was like, yo, let's I'm let's get a beat from Still Bangers. I want to get you in and Pace to do a joint. And uh the first joint we did, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, wasn't a Stool Bangers joint. It was one of our own. Uh Berserk, I believe, made the beat on that. But um we did catch a body and uh his uh, our creative process. When he came back to the house, we, you know, he was like, man, you guys are like, this is like the shout out to John L, John Lewinsky from All I Know Is Goon. He, me and him worked so well together. We did six, seven, eight videos at this time, I believe, since the beginning of COVID. And I'm rambling, but long story short, again, short story's never long. Pace said, yo, you guys are like, I'm watching how you guys are doing things. And it's like, you guys are fucking making movies. And he came back to the crib, we was drinking, chilling. And I said, please, you know, I don't want to take up any of your time. No disrespect. Like, you know, like, you don't have to leave where you could chill with us. He's like, bro, I'm watching you guys edit. We started editing that day. And he was like blown the fuck away. He was like, like, this is crazy. And he was like, came in and they started watching. Like, uh, cause I was on, I was on my shit. You know, I'm like, we get, we got to get this done. And we're, we're about to shoot another video right now for, off this album, The Wicked Life of Crime Joint. Uh, and we're going to go back. It's going to be all shot, shot in Panasonic, old school film style. Or like fish lenses, like no, it's not gonna be no high definition shit. So it's gonna look like almost like a documentary Life of Crime on HBO that just came out or based off mm. my blog. What's up? Then what are some of your interests outside of music? Outside of music, uh I tattoo. I, I was gonna be a full-time tattooist. I could tattoo. I only tattoo homies and family, to be honest with you. I don't I don't do no pay stuff. I'm I'm a I'm a very well-rounded tattoo artist. I was in a book for hand poking and and uh, my head was in a book on the job stop. Shout out to my homie, John Reardon. It was like in a book that was in Barnes and Noble. I started hand poking before I started doing this, but uh, I don't know, man. Just 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 living life, bro. Enjoy, enjoying my time here, man. I, I You know, I, my hobbies really are music. I don't have really too many hobbies outside of music. If it's, if it's not music, it's all related to music in some way, shape, or form. What's hand poking? Hand poking is like uh uh like like pick and poke like uh these are some of the the first joints I did tattooing on myself like you know like prison style like stick and poke mm -hmm. yeah I, 
I uh, I used to I used to work at the shop, so I used to um clean tubes and make needles. And uh, they were my homies that worked at the shop. And like my apprenticeship wasn't taking like uh, serious as it should be. And they wanted me to build a machine. And my homie gave me a machine, so I wound up tattooing. But I started like making needles, and I'm like, fuck this, like. I'm going to take needles home and just start like doing hand pokes. You know what I'm saying? Like sticking pokes. And I got really good at the, um, it's the density of like your skin and the needle and the ink, the way how it hits your skin is, it's a, it's an art craft. You know what I mean? It's definitely, a, a, I have, um, I have hand poking tools actually. Like I have uh, brass pieces and stuff, but I don't know. The hand poke is more personal. It's a, it's a, it's a, it, and it's very tribal orientated it's very much like a more personal you got to sit there and get to know the motherfuckers now like zip zap and you walk out the door you be watching that shit like ink masters and stuff yeah I, you know what's funny I, I i i'm not crazy about the shows and the and a lot of the uh the, the newer culture of tattooing the the, the newer shit because i feel like they're almost exploiting uh tattoos from when they came from you know tattoos came from street shit like you know, like gangster shit, biker shit. You were outlaw if you had a tattoo in the, okay. in the 90s. You did. Now it's like everybody's mom and sisters, like, you know, got something. And it's cool. I, I respect it. You know, I, I have a whole head tattoo. Sometimes sometimes I look back and people ask me, why'd you do that? And I can't give them an answer. You know, it's just, you know, I, I started tattooing my face and shit. And it's like, you're starting to branch out. You're running out of room. I'm full, completely covered. No, I'm saying, um, yeah, I was going to ask you because I don't know if you know, um, this is other cat. I had him on the show. He was on Ink Master named Boneface. He rapped too. Oh, shit. On, he, yeah. I, I know but he rap. He, I heard of him before he raps. He's on Ink Masters. Yeah, he all right. He, he sound good. He got some shit. I got the girl. Hey, you know. hey what you, how y'all doing? Hi. Shout out to the homie. Yeah, nice job, in, nice job in the video. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, yeah, um, they, they uh, it was fun, man. It was, it was, it was, it was dope. It was dope. We had a sick warehouse. We're, she's gonna get going in a sec, right. so we're gonna be out there. Got you. They got, they got to get going in a little bit. So I, I got another like ten, fifteen. Is that cool with you? Is that too short? Uh, we about to wrap it up right now, man. I was just gonna say, uh, what, what would you like to say to your fans and supporters? Man, I would like to say. Thank you from the bottom of my heart, man. Like this shit, when people support my music and uh, uh, my craft and they, they're they reposting the video and liking and commenting on it, that, you know, and, and just cop the cop, cop in the regular merch, the people that cop the regular merch, man. Like it means the world to me because, you know, I'm not playing like I'm some fucking rich rapper, man. Like I do this shit because I love it. I put my own money up. I put... I, I, I invested in myself over the years and I'm finally getting the recognition that I believe I deserve. And it means the world to me, man, when the fans support, man, like it, it helps me create more shit, make more music, make more shit. You know, we're going to, we're going to high end studios now. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not recording. In, I got a studio here too. This, this my whole house is a studio. You know what I'm saying? Like, but what I'm getting at is, uh, you know, I've invested to step my shit up and put out, great sonic work to the world the best i could do and it means the most to me man when people support bro like that's why i do this shit bro you know when people come out at their face to come be like yo and show love because it's like I i'm doing real music man i'm not i'm not rapping about no bullshit this is the real shit and and to me if i could put my life in through the music and give it to the people and they uh, respond back and say like show so much love that's all i care that's all i care about bro that's why i do this shit man i'm giving this shit away pretty much for free man just to the world the world to hear my shit bro you know what i mean like i want to i want to put out the best quality music i could put out every second and every project and it just keeps getting better and better and better and and i'm and not on some ego shit on like from my heart up, I'm happy with it. I'm, I'm the, I judge my music hard as hell. I'm like, God, this is whack. And like, bro, you're crazy. That was, that was dope. But you know what I'm saying? Like on that type of level. So like, that's it, man. The, the, I just want to say thank you. I love, I love all my fans, bro. Nothing but love and respect for all my fans worldwide. I, I appreciate everybody out there, man. It means the world to me that they support me. 
And then who do you consider your hero? Who do I who do I consider my hero, man? Shit. That's a crazy question, man. You know where I got it from? I saw somebody ask Tom Brady that shit. He almost started crying. So I say, shit, I'm gonna take that question. <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, I I consider my stuff, I consider, I consider the hero, the people who are empowered to live for themselves and control their own destiny and live their own life and do something positive. Everybody out there is my hero that's not a fucking famous motherfucker or not some iconic person. My hero, my heroes are my peers. My heroes are my family, my crew, or my girls, my homegirls, my homies, everybody around me. They're, they're my heroes, the people that support me and, and the people that, the people that live the most righteous and try to do the best for the community. That's that's my hero. That's my true hero, you know? All right, man. I want to say thanks for coming through politicking with me. Yes, sir. You want to hit him with your social media anything? Yeah, uh, West Now, W-E-S underscore N-I-H-I-L uh, at Instagram, uh, West Nihilistic 21 on um, Twitter. Uh, hit the Instagram. The link's in the bio. Peep the new video. Go cop the new album. Much love, respects. Shout-outs to you. Shout-outs to Stu Bangers. Uh, 